The secret to perfect gaming. Now this is something I see a lot of people talk about, and for the most part, most of the videos on this go, hey, here's my settings, I think I'm pretty good at the game, use them. And I don't think that's really the best way to describe how you should be utilizing settings in Modern Warfare in order to get the best possible results. In this video today, I'm going to be breaking down and explaining each of the settings you need in this game and why they matter towards your gameplay. We're going to be looking at things like aim response curves, sensitivities, button layouts, and everything in between, so make sure you stay tuned for all of that. I'm also going to point out some other settings in the game for those of you who are looking to maximize your in-game performance. Now, you don't need a special controller to play very well or aim very well. I use a base PlayStation 4 controller, and this also applies to those of you on Xbox One. You don't need anything special, although sometimes they can offer benefits. For the most part, I don't think it's a huge issue. So let's begin, and I'm going to explain the effects of every setting so you guys truly understand why what I am saying is beneficial, rather than just telling you that that is the case. And I'm going to do with these simple settings first. These are the things that don't necessarily affect aim, but are important if you're going to play your best. The first one is film grain. You're going to want to turn that off to complete zero. Uh, film grain tends to actually kind of change the pixelation you see on screen and actually makes it harder to see targets in some instances. Alongside that, you're going to want to turn off weapon motion blur and world motion blur. Motion blur actually makes it harder to see enemies when you're moving fast. If you're moving fast to the left and right, you want to be able to see the character models of enemies rather than having them blurred for the smoothness of the game. In terms of practicality, it works out much better if you turn this setting off completely. And now, let's dive into the aiming settings. This is the secret to perfect aim, and there are multiple settings in this that we need to delve into. The first one is relatively simple, but I don't think it occurs to most people. I always use L1 and R1 to shoot over the triggers. Now the reason I do this is because with the triggers, there is a spring-based retention delay. So effectively what happens is as you slowly compress the trigger, it takes time for that to actually register as input when you're firing on a target. L1 and R1, however, are instantaneous clicks. There is no retention, there's no delay, and there is nothing stopping you from making the impact you're looking for. So if you've ever felt as though you're feeling just a a little bit sluggish, changing to this can help a lot. Now on Xbox, the bumpers don't really work very well in my opinion for this, so if you happen to have, I believe, an Xbox Elite controller, you are capable of changing the delay on these triggers to zero to make it almost instantaneous fire. And now let's talk about the three critical components. These work hand in hand together to create an ecosystem of aiming for you, and that is sensitivity, aim response curve, and aim assist. Now all of these combined create a kind of system where you aim, and a lot of people just tend to leave them as defaults, which isn't necessarily the best. In fact, after doing some relatively rigorous testing, I can safely say that the ones I've chosen here are the best combination, and they work hand in hand with each other for ensuring that you're getting the best experience. Now, when you're playing on console and playing with a controller, for the most part, the aim assist is doing a decent percentage of majority of work. Now, aiming is no, you know, special thing. For the most part, you're going to find that the aim assist is going to snap you or slow you down to the relative location you're looking for. It's more about how you get there in the first place, and also, most importantly, about how you control it once you're there that make the most difference, which is why these settings tend to work the best. And I'm going to start off with aim response curve because this is probably and arguably in my opinion the most important setting if you're looking to perform well on consoles and it actually requires a little bit of math to explain it to you so what the aim response curve does is a kind of movement system so effectively if you think about moving your analog stick typically what you would find is that when you move it the more you move it the more you move left and right but that's dictated by a linear response curve, which tends to be the default one that most people use, which is just a straight line. And on the graph here, you can see that that means the more you move left and right, the more you move rapidly to a certain degree. And in the middle, you have this nice fine central point where movement tends to slow down so you can be more accurate. And that is the sort of middle stick and the center dead zone as most people would refer it to. 
And this is kind of how you notice that when you use the default settings, once you're aiming sort of on central of your target, moving your analog stick very little will do very little. But for the most part, that's not actually what you want. Because what you'll find with most of what you see in Modern Warfare is that sometimes the aim assist is counterproductive. And what you'll also notice as well is that this isn't intuitive for snapping to targets quickly. If you've ever wondered how players jump around corners and get drop shots and trick shots and all these crazy moves off, it's likely because they're using A, a higher sensitivity, but also B, a much better and more responsive response curve. Now, Look at the response curve that you get from Dynamic, which is the one that we're going to use today. Now, what you're seeing when it curves in this S shape is that the more you move the analog stick to the left and right, the faster it moves. So when you move it to the left, it moves quickly, and when you move it to the right, it moves quickly, and in the center, you get just a little bit more movement than you would off of a linear curve. And this works fantastically for Modern Warfare because you wanna snap left and right really fast, but when push comes to shove, you actually want to slow down when you're aiming at the central area of your targets, be it the chest or headshot area. And that's what this little middle area between 0.4 and 0.6 represents. So you're probably asking, well why should I use this? Now the left and right snapping is pretty important. You can see it on screen relatively now that when I move left and right it accelerates much faster. I'm moving quicker. So I can move left and right and acquire targets more quickly, which is something that in Modern Warfare is very important due to the very fast time to kill. But what's also important is the combination between sensitivity and the aim assist. Now, the standard aim assist in Modern Warfare is actually the best. The focusing one doesn't really give you enough, in my opinion, and uh, some of the other ones, like the focused one, which is for new analog stick players, is far too powerful. But the standard one is the perfect trade-off between being able to move between targets but not having your gunplay slowed down completely. There is only one downside to the standard aim assist, and that is once you start firing, for the most part, sometimes it feels as though you can't direct your bullets well enough or the recoil control isn't strong enough. Now, if I go back to the chart here on the response curve, you can see that's because when it comes to the middle on linear, you get very little movement. And because of that, you're often at the mercy of your weapon's recoil, or you can't get that perfect headshot that you were looking for. But the dynamic one in comparison has a much steeper incline, meaning that you can, even with those smaller movements, resist a weapon recoil much better, and more importantly, it means that you can move around your target's central mass and headshots regions much better as well. So when you combine these two elements together, you're getting rid of the trade-off and downside to standard aim assist. You're getting the best of both worlds. And now let's talk about sensitivity. Now sensitivity is something that I would always recommend being very high. Now the reason I say this is because you don't want it to be too high to the point where aiming becomes a task, and you don't want to be too low so that you can't snap to targets fast enough. And I think lots of people aren't willing to use higher sensitivities because they're not used to it, or more importantly they aren't willing to give it a go. I'd say about Three to five games is all you need to get used to it. So for me, sensitivity is best at 16. On 16, the minor movements between the chest shot and the head shot, as well as recoil compensation become very minimal and very easy to do. But at the same time, I can very easily accelerate and snap towards the targets I want to. And I think you can see in the gameplay here that it's very beneficial. I think the issue with Modern Warfare, and a lot of you are probably noticing this, is that you just feel too sluggish, but when the engagements start, it almost feels as though you're not fast enough to react to what's happening, or fast enough to really make a difference. Now, with these changes, I think you can create some of the best gameplay on a controller humanly possible, and I highly recommend using the dynamic response curve alongside 16 sensitivity with a standard aiming assist ratio. All of this combined together creates the perfect ecosystem to nail all of the headshots you could possibly want, and when you combine it with the fact that headshots do double damage and the stability and options you have with this playset, you effectively get the perfect system. I think these are the settings that I will continue to use for the rest of this game, I don't see that changing, and I hope the explanations you've seen in this video give you an actual reason and mathematical reason to some degree as to why you should bother doing this. I'd like to give a quick shout out to Canada Churo on Reddit, who's linked below, for plotting this graph. It's very effective and explains the response curves really well. Now, 
I hope everything you've seen here today makes you use these settings. I highly recommend just trying it. Give it five to 10 games, get used to it and take your time. And I really do firmly believe that this is the best you get in modern warfare. So folks, that's about it from me today, the Tactical Brit. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon in another video.